Hi, I'm Father Chris Alar of the Marian Fathers here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, and welcome back to Living Divine Mercy here on EWTN. Catholics believe in angels, those in heaven and those fallen into hell. The existence of these spiritual, non-corporeal beings is a truth of our faith. The existence of angels is the highest level of belief called a dogma. A dogma is when something has been expressly revealed by God in sacred scripture or sacred tradition. Thus, the existence of angels and demons is a dogma of our faith. We know the saints, and we had a previous show on the angels. But now, who specifically are our guardian angels? We have said before that angels are servants and messengers of God. As purely spiritual persons, but persons without bodies, angels have intelligence and a will like us. They are personal and immortal creatures also like us, but in many ways they are different from us. By nature, they surpass us in perfection, with each having a particular task given by God. Our own guardian angels are usually chosen by God from the last of the nine choirs of angels. Remember, we know from tradition that we have the seraphim, cherubim, thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, principalities, archangels, and the angels. And it is from this last choir, the angels, that we get our guardian angels. No human knows us better or loves us more than our guardian angel. It's perfect love. So you can always count on them. They are the guardians of our safety and salvation, and they obtain for us the grace of final perseverance if we are willing to cooperate with that grace. The ministry of the guardian angels consists of extensive duties, such as they ward off dangers to our body and soul, and they do this by even moving objects physically or mostly putting thoughts in our mind that will lead us to avoid harm, okay? They remove occasions of sin and help us to overcome temptation. They prevent Satan from suggesting evil thoughts. But remember, sometimes they don't do that because God allows it in his providence, Okay, they inspire and foster in us holy thoughts and pious desires. They offer to God our prayers, and they pray for us, even if we don't pray for ourselves. They correct us if we sin. They help us at the moment of death. And they conduct our souls to heaven or to purgatory to console us. Wow, that is no small job for our guardian angels. The bottom line is, they aren't there just to stop a stubbed toe. <laughs> they, they fight for our eternal fate, which is what they are most concerned with, and we should be too. The goal of guardian angels is to guide the human race, even non-Christians. Your guardian angel has been waiting for you since the beginning of time, and your relationship with him will continue in heaven. In fact, their task is not complete until we gaze with them on the face of God. We know this in Matthew 18. So, before that, the angels will ascend and descend, as Scripture tells us. This is the Mass. And at consecration, according to the mystics, all our guardian angels of the people come forward into the sanctuary and kneel around the altar, holding vessels containing whatever you offer up to God. It's beautiful. St. Faustina even tells us that God gives us angels for companions. She said, Oh, how little people reflect on the fact that they always have beside them such a guest, and at the same time a witness to everything. 
Remember, sinners, that you likewise have a witness to all your deeds. Wow, we don't often think about anyone seeing our private sins, but your guardian angel does. So remember that. <clears throat> now, let's answer a few common questions that we hear about angels. Fact, when did you receive your guardian angel? Actually, at the moment of conception, even before the graces of baptism. This is because angels are given to human beings on account of their reason, our reason, not on account of baptismal grace. Okay, does your angel have a name, your guardian angel? Certainly. God has named all his angels, or perhaps the higher angels have even named the lower angels. So they do have a name. But can you name your guardian angel? No, it is unfitting that a human being name an angel, even your guardian angel, because it is for a superior to name an inferior. And angels are higher by nature, so we don't have the authority over them to name them. Okay, did Christ have a guardian angel? Yes, like every other human. It is likely that his angel, uh, his guardian angel, was the highest of all the angels in the lowest choir of angels. Luke wrote, And there appeared to Jesus an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And in Matthew and Mark, we also hear mention of angels ministering to Jesus after he was tempted by the devil. Regarding Mary, Mary Agreta tells us, she's a visionary, that the Blessed Virgin had hundreds of guardian angels, including St. Michael and St. Gabriel. And remember, church tradition says Catholic priests have two guardian angels. We definitely need them. Okay, how many angels are there who could be potential guardian angels? It is likely this choir has far more angels in it than the number of human beings who have ever lived, which is some estimates over 100 billion people have lived since the beginning of time. The only limit to the number of angel guardians is the number of humans, not the number of angels. Okay? Can my guardian angel work with other guardian angels to accomplish something great? Yes, Padre Pio would regularly send his guardian angel to work with other people's guardian angels. See, the, the angels rejoice to work together for our greater good. So ask yours to help the guardian angels of those people you love. Our guardian angels do all they can to help us. But since they are not omniscient, they don't know everything, it is up to us to expose our intimate thoughts to them and have no secrets hidden from them. Because they are surely your best friend after God and Mother Mary, the best gift for you to do is share with them and also for you to give your guardian angel an offering of Holy Communion in gratitude and then go to adoration. Why? Because your guardian angel has to stay with you. And if you are never in the presence of God, they are not either. But if you go to adoration, they are thrilled because then they are in the presence of God in the blessed sacrament. So give them this gift. And finally, Pope Francis even touched on this topic when he said guardian angels exist. They are not imaginative doctrine, but companions that God has placed beside us on our life's journey and should be listened to because it is dangerous, he said, to reject our travel companion. He said, how often have we heard, I should do this or I should not do this? That's not right. Be careful. He said, this is the voice of our travel companion, our guardian angel. You can be sure that he will guide us to the end of our lives with advice. And so listen to his voice, the Holy Father said. Don't rebel against it. He said, ask yourself this question today. How is my relationship with my guardian angel? Do I listen to him? Do I say good morning to him in the morning? Do I ask him to watch over me when I sleep? Do I speak with him? 
do I ask his advice? How is my relationship with this angel that the Lord has sent to watch over me and accompany me on my journey? Know that he is always by your side. Now, speaking about being at your side, let's hear the amazing story of Coast Guard Chaplain Daniel Mode, who is a man that has given of himself to protect others. I grew up in a Catholic family, uh, a military Catholic family. My dad was a Navy officer, so uh, I lived all over the world. I've never lived anywhere longer than four years. I went to three different high schools in two different countries. So yeah, I, I came up uh, as a military brat, but I've always been uh, Catholic. We, we grew up in a very faithful Catholic family. Obviously that sowed the seed of my vocation, um, and, and so did the military. I always say when I could first breathe, I wanted to be a pilot. In sixth grade, I built a complete cockpit in my room, uh, in my bedroom. I built a control tower in my backyard, and this is in Hawaii, and could watch the jets come in. But it was in my eighth grade year, I was in a Catholic grade school in Chicago, Illinois, and we were with a bunch of relatives on Christmas Day. And it was there at the meal, literally at dinner, uh, that I hear in my heart these words. Dan, you are to be a priest. And I heard them twice. Um, and it was, I would call today an interlocution. Um, and it really struck my heart uh, as an eighth grader. Uh, and, but I kind of was puzzled. I said, how can I be a pilot and be a priest? Interestingly enough, after I was ordained, uh, within a couple weeks, I started flying lessons. Um, and I became a private pilot. Father Mode also became an author. While attending chaplain school in Newport, Rhode Island, he couldn't help but notice that the chapel, the street in front of the barracks, and the ship in the harbor were all named after one man, Father Vincent Robert Cappadano. The life of Father Cappadano became Father Mode's master's thesis, which he then turned into a book. Like Father Mode, Father Cappadano, the tenth child of an Italian immigrant family, had a dream of his own. While taking the Staten Island Ferry to night classes at Fordham University, Vincent would often thumb through the Mary Knoll magazine called Field Afar. What he read there sparked a desire to become a priest and a missionary. After his ordination, he spent six years ministering to the Hakka people in Taiwan before volunteering to be a chaplain where he thought he would be needed most, for there was a war raging in a far-off place called Vietnam literally transforming his life and becoming more and more selfless and really model, modeling the virtues in a very heroic way, especially the virtues of charity, generosity, uh, faith, um, all those virtues, uh, hope came, came to life in him. He cared for everyone even to his death. On September 4th, 1967, he was killed. He was shot, shot 27 times in the back and died literally over a corpsman, ultimately received the Medal of Honor. Definitely he was a missionary, and um, I actually think of myself as a missionary. I think of all chaplains as missionaries. And what's the definition of a missionary? Here, here's, to me, the best definition of a missionary. One who is sent to where they are needed and not necessarily wanted, and they're there to stay there until they're wanted, but not necessarily needed. People want you because you represent Christ to them. You represent uh, that hope, that need, that love that they don't see or have, especially in a war zone when it can become very ugly and kind of hell for people. I served two years in Afghanistan and, and during those years I understood what Father Cappadano must have gone through and the hope and the joy and the expectation of mercy that he gave to people uh, especially in the hell of war. One day in Afghanistan was like two weeks anywhere else, and it strips away all the veneer of who we are and, and gets to the kernel of it. So uh, a war zone can do that, and there's no more powerful ministry that can happen than in that situation of life and death. Uh, the reality of somebody who uh, had to defend his unit and maybe took some lives and then coming to me and talking through those, those moments where he had to pull the trigger. Uh, those are, are very powerful uh, moments in a person's life. 
uh, and death. Uh, maybe the death of a, of a friend of theirs, uh, a comrade in arms. And I did many memorial services. During my time in Afghanistan, 36 uh, people, soldiers, sailors, Marines, uh, died on my watch. Uh, within about two days of my arrival in Afghanistan, in Kandahar, Afghanistan, uh, a person died in my arms in, in the medical tent. So too, too for us uh, and myself specifically, uh, preparing for those moments in Afghanistan really took a lifetime, really. And I'm still being uh, filled and, and changed uh, by the experiences I have. Uh, so God, that's the beauty of God. You know, we're never finished. He's always working on us. My anchor in my whole life has always been the sacraments being close to the sacraments, especially the Eucharist. I've been a priest for a little over 31 years, and I've never missed celebrating Mass every single day of my life. Whether I had to carry my four breviary set in Afghanistan, all duct taped, as you can imagine, you know, in a rucksack, uh, and using a red light in a Humvee at uh, 11 o'clock at night to, to read my prayers, I never missed. Uh, celebrating Mass on a crate, uh, in, in a corner uh, with maybe three people around me, uh, but I never missed. Today, Father Mode is the 12th chaplain of the Coast Guard, leading 159 chaplains in its service and meeting with similar Coast Guards from other nations, engaging in discussions about the Catholic faith and having a travel schedule that is itself sort of miraculous. Just in the last uh, 30 days, I've been in Helsinki, Finland, uh, Stockholm, Sweden, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, so put that on your itinerary. <laughs> You're embedded with them. You're not sitting back at a chapel. You are literally now walking that same road with them with a, a 50 pound pack uh, through the early morning. Uh, you're doing the push-ups. You are living in their ship. You're living in their barracks. You are living in their world. And that's, I think, the secret of being a great chaplain, is you are now a missionary. You're embedded with them. You take on who they are. And they see that and respond very beautifully when they know somebody has given up the same comforts that they have, the same distance from their family they have, and all of a sudden, you understand me. And I'll show you what divine mercy means. Every. Uh, military person in authority gets to have a, a coin and I got to design the coin but the pelican is a symbol of the Eucharist or really a, a symbol of sacrifice of God's mercy in our life. Um, the pelican also happens to be a maritime bird so it's one of the few birds that goes under the water on the water and over the water. It's a bird that uh, flies in the nastiest weather and finally the big beak that the pelican has it fills it with all this fish never for itself. It always brings it back to the community, just like the Coast Guard. It's always willing to sacrifice, give for the community, give for those they serve. It's a three-letter word, God. My ultimate commanding officer giving me a mission. That drives you, that gives you hope, that gives you inspiration. Um, and you constantly go back to your commanding officer for guidance. Uh, and so too, I go back to my commanding officer, my ultimate commanding officer of God for guidance. Well, thank you, Daniel, for a great story. We always support our men and women in the Coast Guard and the armed forces. Now, let's hear in Scripture more about God's revelation of the angels. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. Then flew one of the seraphim to me, having in his hand a burning coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin forgiven. In Hebrew, the holiness of God refers to not only his perfect righteousness, but also to his infinite, transcendent, and sacred mystery. This is why Isaiah is afraid of meeting God face to face. 
He exclaims, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King of the Lord of hosts. Jesus says to St. Faustina, My child, do not fear the God of mercy. My holiness does not prevent me from being merciful. I never reject a contrite heart. Your misery has disappeared in the depths of my mercy. That is precisely what Isaiah experiences. Far from destroying Isaiah for his transgressions, the Lord sends an angel with a burning coal from the altar to purify the very lips with which Isaiah had sinned. At every Mass, we join the angels in their hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God of Hosts. Like Isaiah, we receive from the altar a burning coal of purification, the Eucharist, to purge us of our sins and make us holy as he is holy. Hello. Hello. Where are you from? Hi, Mother Angelica. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing My fine. How, how are you doing? My name is Johnny. Uh, fine. I'm six years old. And I'm a member of the club. Okay. And I always like watch your videos every day. You do. How wonderful. Do you like them? Mm-hmm. That's great. Do you share them with anybody? Tell me about guardian angels. Huh? Tell me about guardian angels. You want me to tell you about guardian angels? Oh, I thought you would never ask. <laughs> <laughs> when you were born, the Eternal Father looked down on you and he saw you and he said, Ah, I have a special angel just for her. And so, he told that angel, come here. And the angel came quickly and he said, now here she is. And I want you to guard her, to guide her, to inspire her, and to protect her. And he said that to everybody that's born. An angel that no one's ever had before or will ever have again. Your own angel. What a awesome gift. When the sermon was over, I did not wait for the end of the service, as I was in a hurry to get back home. When I had taken a few steps, a great multitude of demons blocked my way. They threatened me with terrible tortures. Seeing their great hatred for me, I immediately asked my guardian angel for help, and at once the bright and radiant figure of my guardian angel appeared and said to me, Do not fear, spouse of my Lord. Without his permission, these spirits will do you no harm. Immediately the evil spirits vanished, and the faithful guardian angel accompanied me in a visible manner right to the very house. His look was modest and peaceful, and a flame of fire sparkled from his forehead. Hi, I am Father Kaz Schwalek, and this is Ask a Marian. Carol asks, how do I pray to my guardian angel? Do I make the sign of a cross first? Yes, every prayer we begin in the name of the Holy Trinity. So thus we make the sign of the cross as we say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As children, we're taught to pray to our guardian angels. As adults, we often forget to call upon these powerful messengers of God and our faithful guardians. We believe that from the moment of conception until a person's last breath, a guardian angel surrounds each human being with their watchful care and intercession. The angels are powerful intercessors. They know God's gracious will towards us as they always behold the face of God, the Father who is in heaven. These mighty intercessors do God's will on our behalf. On October 2nd, 
the feast of the guardian angels, we pray the following opening prayer at the Divine Liturgy. O God, who in your unfathomable providence are pleased to send your holy angels to guard us, hear our supplication as we cry out to you that we may always be defended by their protection and rejoice eternally in their company. Every day we pray the angel's prayer whereby we recall the powerful intercession of the Archangel Gabriel who brought the good news to Mary that she would become the mother of the incarnate word. He addressed her, hail full of grace, the Lord is with you, signifying by this action his role as the messenger of God. We do not need complicated prayers to address the intercession of our guardian angel. We can simply recite the prayer we have learned as children. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light, to guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Well, that prayer is one that I and many of you learned as a child, but we should be praying every day. Prayers to our guardian angel. Well, thank you everybody for joining us and please be with us next week as we talk about St. Francis. And in the meantime, we here at the Marian Fathers make these beautiful images that we would love you to have in your home. This is a great example of one of Mary with the angels. And it's a beautiful way to recognize the importance of their role that God has given them to help us. So again, the information is there on your screen, and we hope that you don't forget your guardian angels. So until next week, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.